welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a book review for Midnight Sun. And I'm so excited to be doing this because I actually ended up really liking Midnight Sun and that was something that I really didn't expect. If you don't know, I made a video a few months back when the news about Midnight Sun came out and I made a video about what I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna leave the link down below and over here. And basically my idea that what Mayer was gonna do with the whole Midnight Sun was that it was either gonna help a little to understand everything that happened or just gonna make it worse. It could either go either way, but I think it actually nailed it too well and it went both ways, if that's even possible, and we are gonna get into those details in a little bit. But yeah, I actually ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would because my thing with the whole Twilight series is I read it when I was like 14 or something and I was obsessed and I loved it and I didn't understand a lot of the things so for me it was just a fun book and then I grew up a little and I saw views and I saw a lot of the points that were made about the books and I understood them and internalized them and you know just mature and I was disillusioned about the book I not disappointed completely but you know not just as obsessed and then I just grew uh, meh I don't care one way or another and the news came out and I just knew I had to read it for my younger self and I was not expecting a lot about it and to like it but I ended up liking it as I said and that's probably the biggest surprise of this year to be honest um, yeah, so I'm gonna be doing a pretty in-depth review here because I wanted to get into a few little details that I found that were pretty interesting to understand. So let's get started before this video becomes massive. Uh, if you don't know what Midnight Sun is, it's just basically Twilight but from Edward's point of view, which is interesting because it's the same plot the Twilight, nothing changes, you know what's gonna happen, you know when it's gonna happen, even a lot of the conversations are pretty much the same, so it's just adding context and a lot of like inside thoughts and a few scenes here and there, which was pretty interesting, but again, it's kind of like rereading a book, so that was an interesting experience seeing everything from Edward's point of view was a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know, just seeing like the thoughts that only he can hear obviously and the little details that therefore only he can hear were really funny at times. I always thought that, that mind reading is just about the worst power ever because there are a lot of things that you don't want to know that people think even if it's a fleeting thought, so yeah, I never wanted to have that, but seeing it from Edward's point of view, it was actually really funny. Um, I still don't want to ever have to have that power, but it was really funny to see that, and it also adds a lot of context into a lot of other little vampire uh, details, because he has been a vampire for like nearing a century i think short just shy of the century so there are a lot of things that obviously bella never knew because of her point of view and therefore we never really understood or knew and that he explains that was really really nice um, it cleared some stuff which i think was really really good because there are just some points that are lost in context and it's nice to finally be able to put into context and as well we have all the scenes with the columns which was probably my favorite part of the book just seeing all the columns interacting i just love their dynamic i have forgotten how much i like emmet and alice and caroline so that was so much fun i loved 
loved any scene that any of the Colans were in. I don't care who it was. And we have flashbacks, which was a delight all on its own, just seeing the flashbacks of moments that obviously only Edward could know that happened. And uh, it was just so good, especially because we have so much content that it's just gushing, literally gushing on Caroline. So that was so so nice and so so fun and i really really like all of those little moments and just like we have rosely 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 which is a very complicated character and seeing it from bella's point of view it's pretty bad we can say until like probably the third book when we start to understand her a little bit more but when we go with Edward's point of view and we see other details and other sides and like all the history there is there it's so interesting and I actually really understood her and really like her not that I didn't understand her before because I did at the end but now it's completely different seeing things from other sides and that was so fun and so interesting to just get all these other sides and all these other little details that we have I actually liked Bella, Bella's personality um, this time around because I don't know if at this point I'm remembering more the movies than the books because honestly I read the books a long time ago and I watched the movies equally a long time ago so maybe mixing them but for what I remember Bella didn't have a lot of a personality at least for me it didn't feel like she had a lot of a personality more than this clumsy girl that we're supposed to really like but from Edward's point of view she actually had a personality that I liked and that's something that needed to be in, to be mentioned by me for me because Seriously, I didn't feel like she had personality before, but now suddenly she has all these quirks and little things and I'm like Wait a minute. When did she have a personality? When did she get a personality? But she did and I really enjoyed that part. Sorry, I'm on my tablet because um, I have a lot of points to make and I don't want to forget anything um, But yeah, seeing Bella with a personality was incredibly fun it was really interesting to see it all um, again it's not like you get surprised because there are no plot twists there are not cliffhangers or anything like that because you know how the story ends and everything it's just kind of fun to see it and i think that's the thing the book it's really fun not very deep but really really fun to read and to just breeze through because it was just really gripping and before we continue, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna enter a very spoilery section right now and it's probably not spoiling the whole plot thing because I think we all have read Twilight before we read Midnight Sun so it's not a spoiler in that context but in some little details that were mentioned in the books and actually I have some quotes that I wanted to point out to explain my points so if you don't want to get like spoiler um, you can skip this and I'm gonna leave the, mi the minute where the whole section ends so you can just skip to the end of the video or you can watch it because seriously it's not that bad but you are forewarned if, if you don't want to see that anyway even though it did a lot of things that I liked and enjoyed there were still all those little things that were not okay that still were there and even though some were more understandable because again we have more insight now they are still not right and I just need to talk about them because while I was reading the book I just I knew I had to talk about it and one of those and probably the cross the crux of this whole thing it's the love story which is arguably the biggest part of the book and of the series because it may be paranormal or whatever but it's very much a love story and a romance and it's just as messed up as it was before some things I will give that I understand a little bit better now but a lot of other things are still very much messed up the first thing that called my attention it's like 
Edward really just idolizes and makes Bella his angel. He always he always sees himself like the demon of the story, and he's all about things. And he's this monster and everything like that. But he idolizes Bella and just sees her good qualities, her good traits. And I'm not saying that she cannot be this kind person or whatever. But he literally doesn't see like almost anything but maybe one scene that she's like a stubborn or everything else that Bella does is like oh Bella she's so perfect she's beautiful let's just worship there the soil the path that she walk because she's an angel that kind of thing and that's just wrong for a start of a relationship because every person has wrong parts that you need to accept that you need to love as well as the, the good qualities that you like the best like literally and i'm gonna just give one quote and it has like five or six of these ones and it says kind and self-effacing and unselfish and brave she was good through and through everyone has their bad sides and i think edward was just blocking them or just literally he just made her his angel that was all the things that he called them in his mind because again he has this mindset that he's the demon that he's the monster that he's all the bad things so he created an angel that he couldn't have but that was gonna save him in a way and it's just because of the mindset and that was it caught my attention it's not the most terrible thing or disturbing or anything but i do think that it's something that just not how you should see a person and then we have the whole how the heck did they fall in love because it happens so fast and excuse me i'm terrible at measuring time in books i always get lost and i need like you need to tell me six months have happened since the beginning of the book because otherwise i'm not gonna be able to really measure it i'm really bad at that but i think that the whole book happens in like a month or two I don't think it's a lot more than that, but it's super short and it's super fast. How the heck did Bella fall in love with Edward? Because if a guy was so bipolar and weird, yes, I may be interested in why are you being so weird? I can understand a kind of morbid fascination, but from morbid fascination to totally no, I don't see how that can happen. Like. Girl, the dude even literally says that he wants to kill you. Why didn't you run in the other direction? And Belle hasn't has even had any kind of romantic uh, endeavors relationships before. So she has literally zero experience in that area and yet uh, totally okay that she is obsessed with this guy suddenly because they are both obsessed equally obsessed with each other and at least edward now i understand a little bit more because it's kind of explained in the book um it says that like and literally i'm quoting when change comes for one of us it was a rare and permanent thing and permanent thing um so it's kind of like in my understanding, kind of like a whole uh, soulmate thing, like when you become a vampire, you suddenly have a soulmate and you find the one person and since they don't change, that's their one. So I kind of understand it a little more from Edward's perspective. They never had any relationships, either, either like a human or as a vampire because he had to find the one that was going to be for him forever. And we kind of see it in all the other relationships that we see, they find one and that's their one. So that's kind of understood uh, but still there are other scenes with Edward and also in another point he sees he says that he's a hundred almost a hundred I think I, I'm not quite sure of his age but he's still 17 in all the ways that count because he was frozen in there and like the time when they are transformed uh, they their minds get frozen in that point too which okay i can understand a little bit that they don't mature i guess whatever not the point the point is that he's pretty much a 17 year old so all the mood changes and everything it's kind of explaining that i can kind of understand the mood changes and the whole 
things that he does are a little bit more explained and again i kind of understand how they were for in love but for bella i still don't get it and edward is just i feel like the book was a little bit more um, self-aware of these things and it's kind of give me a second the book is a little more. The book is a little more, more self-aware of the things, and it's kind of pointing them out and understanding that they are fundamentally wrong and that you shouldn't do it. Uh, to the point that everyone recognizes that he's been stalkerish and that that's completely wrong and that he should then yet still he does it and they happen and he still violates her privacy and everything is not to the last degree a lot and he still stalkers her follows her everywhere literally since the moment that he decides okay i want to be with her and he doesn't leave her alone when she's in her own house he's always around so that's just wrong and when he tells bella she's just like okay cool you are so good to me I still don't get it, uh, but I will give it that it was self-aware about those things and it it brushes them out but also understands that they are fundamentally wrong and that nobody should do that but at the same time, okay, let's let them fall in love together. That's, it's a whole thing. The relationship is just like that. It's, codependent and it's still pretty toxic and where it's still super controlling and that's something that is not uh, addressed at any point there is this quote that i was just so i cringe so hard when i read it and it just says i frowned to myself what bella wanted and what was best for bella were two very separate things excuse me you may think that you know what best for someone but you still need to respect what they want to do even if what they want to do it's stupid and it's dangerous and it's not the best decision it's their decision you cannot just override someone's decision because you think that you know better no that's just that one i do not i can't get over and yeah yeah it's just the crux of everything for me and i just i just can't with it and the point is that Bella even kind of realizes that something is not completely how it should be the relationship. She even stays towards the end of the book, but it just seems logical. A man and a woman have to be somewhat equal, as in one of them can always be swooping in and saving the other one. They have to save each other equally, which I think was a super pretty quote. And she realizes this and then continues to do absolutely nothing about it. like. It's good that at least she's realizing this, but you should also do something about your relationship when you realize that it's not like that. That's pretty much about their relationship and all the things that at least it's a more self-aware book about all the things or the majority of the things which I appreciate because it needed to be addressed. And it's been so long that I think most people have pointed everything out of these things so either Mayer took that into account and decided to at least I'm gonna make it self-aware and I'm gonna make sure that they know this is not right or whatever point she tried to make it I think it was well worth it it couldn't change the search couldn't change how things went it, it was written already but it does stand a little bit better for 2020, I think, even though it's still there and it's still happening. Um, it's what it is, I suppose. But yeah, so if you read the book in good fun and you know what you're gonna find, you know that it's not the best thing romantically speaking and you know that you don't have to like idolize or think that this is the model relationship or anything like that it's actually really fun to read it's lighthearted and it's pretty engrossing i don't know how mayor did it but she created a world that it's 
really engrossing and that just sucks you in and never lets you leave because either you love it or you hate it or whatever you are doing with the book or you're criticizing it, whatever, you are talking about it. And I think that just proves the point that everyone got obsessed with it at some point. So that just really tells you of the power of this world. Whatever you think about it, you talk you talked about it most likely so that's really interesting and it still holds true i started the book and i couldn't put it back i couldn't put it down and i was not expecting that it was amazing and it was delightful and it was just so fun to read so lighthearted and it brought all these memories and all these thoughts and feelings back and it was just so nice that and now I actually kind of want to read all the other books from Edward's point of view so that's something I never thought I will say but I'm definitely back into the Twilight Twilight Wagon if you can say it like that um, not obsessed like when I was a child but definitely interested into it and I will read more of it I even want to kind of reread the books and that's something I never thought I will say <laughs> So that definitely something and I think these books are really more like a comedy, romantic comedy than a supernatural epic kind of thing <laughs> and it's just what it is and if you take it like that and if you are really on the known of what you are gonna find you're just gonna enjoy them really much because it's really easy to enjoy them so this was my little rant about midnight sun about midnight sun i enjoyed it a lot i think if you love twilight at some point you should read it it's a nice book um i hope you enjoyed it i had a lot of fun reading the book and compiling everything to do this massive video because i'm sure it's gonna be really long but yeah, comment down below if you liked Twilight and when you read it, what it meant to you because I think it meant something for all of us at some point that was very special and you know, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and click the little bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video and I'll see you next week, bye!